how do we know that we're on the right track in our personal journey? What if there are no tracks? What if everything is always just okay the way that it is? What if there's actually nothing to worry about? If we can fully embody this experience and feel all that there is to feel without pushing ourselves beyond what we're actually able to handle, but just finding the edge of where things feel safe and also on the edge of unknown or uncertain or learning, expanding, just walking along that edge, not pushing any further. So much learning happens at that boundary. If we stay within the boundary, we're in familiar territory. We're in what we already know. And if we just walk up to the edge, we can see and feel our skin can make contact with the unknown. We can get a taste for it and an embodied sense, a felt sense of what it actually feels like and pressing on that boundary. We don't have to push ourselves beyond that. What would the world be like if we all held our own and met at those edges uh, without feeling the need to violate and would we find it a more harmonious, more balanced um, existence? I don't know, but it certainly maybe feels that way to me and it seems that way to me. The way that I see the way that I experience this is that there is no actual need for violating other people, um, for exploiting other living beings. It's, uh, we can have everything that we want and everything that we need without actually feeling like we need to get that from somewhere else. Everything that we need exists in this moment right now. And that does not mean ignoring those movements. If we feel the movement to get something or to go and take something or to, we don't ignore those movements and pretend like they're not real because they are. And we can just be aware of that while we're doing it. It doesn't mean we don't have to do it or we don't get to do it. It just means we're aware of it and we're using the skill of discernment to be able to feel those edges and those boundaries and have conversations and have um, a mutually beneficial experience. And the only way, I mean, I won't say the only way, but the way that I know how to best approach that is very slowly. Um, because when we reach those edges, um, 
fear can arise, which is really an exciting, it can be anxiety or anxiousness. It can be anticipation. It can be um, exhilaration or excitement. Um, but it can very easily turn into something that's a fearful or negative experience in which we then turn back in on ourselves and things kind of get confused, get warped, and we're no longer really able to um, be aware of what we're doing and the boundaries that we're pushing on. And we can't really feel it very well. And we kind of start to dissociate from our actual bodily experience. The, the mind uh, is not, uh, the thinking mind is not sufficient in and of itself to be able to discern reality or what's actually happening because it's an experience. It's not a mental construction. And we have to go through the experience and feel what's happening and maybe make mistakes, maybe get hurt. Um, but the more that we can be conscious and the more that we can be aware while we're going through that experience uh, and we can bring that discernment into the experience, um, we'll give ourselves a much smoother ride, perhaps, uh, much happier, more fun, more enjoyable, um, more positive experience um, within all of the, the myriad uh, thoughts and emotions and feelings and activities that will happen. Not, not that we're doing it, not that it's happening to us, but it's just something that's happening and we can be in that. Um, but it's not about abandoning ourselves. It's not about releasing ourselves or relinquishing selfhood or self-control. Or I mean, certainly there is an element of letting go of control that's, that's necessary, more or less, depending on how tightly you are. Um, personally, I think I hold myself very tightly, so your mileage may vary. Um, But I had remember when I started this video, I was thinking about, well, what is reality? Like, what is this? It appears like certain things last. I'm looking at a bookshelf right now. It's a wooden, a brown wooden shelf. And it's been there. And what am I trying to say? I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm looking at a bookshelf. What else can I say about it, really? There's nothing more to say. Um, and that's the moment where I get so caught up in what it is that I'm doing and saying, and I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking, you're you're wasting your time. Why are you saying that you're seeing a bookshelf and it's a bookshelf? I mean, and yet some part of me knows that that like it is what it is, which I think is a phrase that people have feelings about. Um, but the isness of what this experience is without trying to figure it out. And without, we don't need to worry about it. Like it's a bookshelf. <laughs> okay, great. So there, there's no problem is what I'm, it's like, what's the problem there, right? That's a pretty inert object, but we can look at something else and very easily find problems. Um, things that are more emotionally charged, personally triggering, uh, we see that and we don't say, oh, that's my partner that I'm having a really extreme argument with. We don't see that and we say, oh, that's someone who just got hit by a bus. And we don't see those kinds of things and just feel, oh, yes, it's just that. We feel a lot of things when we see emotionally charged events. Um, never mind 
getting caught in the mind of like events that we're not even physically witnessing, but are hearing about big stories of what's happening in the world. Lots of catastrophes and lots of drama and lots of hurt and pain and death and suffering and sickness and all those things. And we hear those things and we don't just say, oh, well, there's a natural disaster that happened. Okay. Like there's a lot, there's emotions that come up. Um, there's fear, there's compassion. There's maybe some people are driven to act, to give, to help, to do something. Um, what I wonder though is like, how often do we find ourselves really um, embodying the space that we're actually in physically? Like if you're watching this right now, where are you? Look around. I'm not yelling at you. I'm not mandating you to do this. I'm just saying like, where are you? Where is your body right now? What does it feel like right now? Um, you may be someone who's really aware of that. And you may say, oh yeah, I'm watching you and I'm listening to this talk. And I'm also really aware that my butt is, there's pressure on the chair that I'm, and my feet, there's pressure on the ground. Or I feel this, the air in my skin, it's kind of cold or it's a little bit chilly. Um, my heart feels warm. My chest is tight. You know, my neck hurts. Those kinds of things. And, um, oh yeah, the sun is shining. Oh, the sky is blue. Oh, those overhead lights actually <laughs> are a terrible color and make my brain hurt. But that's another story. Um, that's an interpretation and that's how I feel about those. But looking around, like what's actually happening? Um, and I, I have to wonder, how do we blend um, this world of the internet and the visual and audio um, channels, which are waves of light that are being streamed from one place to another place. It's starting seemingly originating here, right? Somewhere. Something is originating within my body, myself here, that this voice is coming out. And there is a microphone and that's picking up those sound waves. And there is a camera lens and it's picking up these light waves that are reflecting off of my body surface. All right, all that stuff is then being folded up and cut up, put into this tiny little Okay, so I'm recording this on an actual camera with like a little SD card. So all that's being put into this tiny little rectangle, very, very small rectangle. Um, and then I'm taking that rectangle and I'm putting it into a bigger rectangle, which is called my laptop, transferring all those little packets into the laptop. And then I'm taking those things, sending them back up through into the sky or the air or the ether or whatever. Uh, that's called uploading to YouTube. <laughs> and eventually, um, it'll get, whatever, there's a whole process that it, it gets stored on YouTube servers, et cetera, et cetera, and YouTube then sends that to you, again, through the magical cloud of the ether. And through some period of space and time and things are getting squeezed and compressed and stretched and pushed and pulled, eventually you're hearing and seeing this, if you're still watching this video, which I always wonder, is anyone still watching? I know that they are because YouTube will tell me this person, or it shows you when someone has watched the whole thing. And I say to myself, wow, they, watch, they, they stayed for 45 minutes. They actually watched me talk for 45 minutes. How interesting. Um, and it's interesting, it's interesting to me like that whatever it is that I'm expressing can be, I guess maybe it's engaging, compelling, or it could be background. I would love to be background noise. I'd love to do some videos that are just more just to, to have on in the background, just for... ASMR or, or something like that. Again, I've had this come up a few times. People have said, oh man, you should do some ASMR videos or something. That's make some soothing videos. Someday maybe I will. I'm gonna keep mentioning it. Anyway, um, cause my brain is, you know, very slow to learn. I mean, is it though? What am I actually saying? What am I, what am I even talking about? I'm getting off on this tangent about other things that I could be doing or maybe will or should. Um, and I'm not in my, and I was talking about being in my body, right? <laughs> Where am I? What's, it's like, yeah, 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 okay. 
in my body, I'm feeling. <sighs> There's a lot of different feelings in there. And my butt's getting even more tired on this chair. And my knees are getting a little sore. Maybe I should move them. So it's like if we don't even really know what's going on in our own body, in, our, in the room that we're sitting in, how can we be expected? It seems like a lot to ask. How can we be expected to deal with much bigger and vaster situations and problems? Um, we do. And also, I don't know how efficient that is. I don't know how effective it is to be pushing ourselves to deal with things beyond what we're actually capable of fully embodying and understanding. Um, it's that classic trope of, you know, make your bed. And I think Jordan Peterson maybe popularized or more recently popularized, popularized that. Um, I did, I read his book, which I won't pass judgment on that. I, um, but I do remember him talking about making your bed and cleaning your room and that being a, anyway, I do feel like I'm passing some judgment on that right now. <laughs> um, I think there is some value or wisdom to this concept of dealing with what's actually in front of us. And I may disagree with some of the ways in which that particular person has dealt with those issues on a personal level, but to a certain extent, that concept is really quite useful. And there's a lot of wisdom in that because if we're not really even aware of what we're doing right now, and we can never, maybe we can't be fully aware, but you want to be like 99% sure, like here's where my feet are and my legs are, or do you? Or do you just let the train run? Do you just let it run? Maybe that's how most people live. Maybe it's okay. Maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. For me, I think once you get a little bit of self-awareness and you're like, okay, I know that I'm here and this is happening, um, I think sort of people do wrap that up in this sort of spirituality kind of thing where if you have different oh, revelations or epiphanies or awakenings or understandings, or essentially you get a little bit of self-awareness and then it becomes, well, this door is now open and I can no longer close the door. So what do I do with that? Um, I think that if we're self-aware and we can't shut it off, um, and depend, it really depends. It's going to be different for everyone. Your, your body, your brain, it's so much different than mine and everyone else's. Um, but there's some kind of way, uh, there's, there's some kind of synthesis of the awareness and the actual experience. Um, I think ideally the experience is just happening and we might be aware of it happening. But we're not necessarily getting in the way of it happening. We're not necessarily directing it or controlling it. And we're not getting caught in it. And I don't know how, how do you access that, which I would consider to be like be living in the flow of life where things start to feel really more positive and good and easy and yet you're also, you're aware of it. It's not just being carried away with your eyes closed. You're, you're very much participating. Just you might not be actually like, the, you're not holding it. You're not squeezing it and you're not trying to steer it necessarily. Maybe there's a little bit of a nudge here and there. Maybe there's a little bit of a, you know, a hope or a wish or uh, intention. Um, but how does life actually move through me? How fast does it move? How big is it? How, how can I just let that happen is the question that I'm asking myself. 
And when the conditions are not what I want at all, then how do I just say, okay, let's, let's take this all in stride, no matter how much I don't want it to be that way. That, 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 oh, you know? How do we also give a voice to that? The, the, the desire, the grasping, the yearning, the frustration, the anger. Um, I, don't want it to, I don't want this. I want it to, you know, like we're given things and we say, well, I don't, I don't want that. It's like, wait a minute, but that's what you're being given. So what's the, what's the worry? It's going to be forever or it's going to be too long or I'm going to have to change or I'm going to have to grow or be uncomfortable or feel embarrassment or shame or anxiety or things like that. But the alternative is to feel, to push things away and waste your whole life being um, closed off to experience. And, and that's a very specific kind of stress that's not a good stress. Um, because in this life, you can be open to experience or you can be more closed to it. And it's always about finding that balance of where is the optimal amount of openness and closedness in the given moment. And it's always changing, right? So you can't, there's no formula for it. And I know that some people have like a real connection to something that informs them at all times, maybe. Um, and if not, maybe they have a practice or a, maybe they have a phrase or saying or a religious mantra or something that lets them unhook from their own thoughts and just say, ah, okay, I don't know exactly what's happening, but it's okay. Um, And silence is okay. I feel like if you're still watching this video, you're probably okay with silence too. <laughs>